This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show. Hey, baby, we're back. I'm trying to do like, I don't know, old radio. <laughs> Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end looking chip up, my man. What's up, bro? Getting ready to watch this weekend before we go into anything. Going with the uh, the Irishman again this weekend, Jackie and wow. I. Gonna, yeah, yeah. And I got to say, dude, and I know I said this when it came out, that like 10 minute, 15 minute run where you're in it, you know, your whole story's playing out. It, that, that's the closest thing to Goodfellas in that film. I fucking love that part, bro. Should be on set right now in another film. Everybody should be doing their shit. I can't take it. Anyway, uh, anyway. Hey, man, you're, you're preaching to the choir over here, man. It's, uh, it's a constant struggle trying to get through this damn thing. Um... Where do I want to go today? Yeah. Hey, hey, let me start by saying Lana and I went to, uh, we have a storage unit. So we went to go clean that out. This oh. is how so bored we are. Wow. Uh, Interesting. Is it, is it, uh, is it like if you didn't go to it and they auctioned it off, would it be a good haul or is it just like, you know, clothes and shit? Well, I mean, can you. Uh, even- yeah, yeah, it's it's got like a lot of. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in a, you know storage unit attic stuff where you like sock away old memories or what have yeah, you. Yeah. The problem with cleaning out a storage unit is half of the time you start looking at like old pictures and then you're not even cleaning it out. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's almost like the attic of your house, but instead of the attic, you go to the storage unit and look around. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, it, it, like Lana took some modeling photos way back when, and you know, I'm ripping her to shreds on that. And you end up having more of like a walk down memory lane than you actually do cleaning out the, the the storage shed, right? Yeah, yeah, and, no, absolutely. And what, what she wants to save, I don't want to save. You know, it's that that whole yin and yang. But that's well, why I, you got the storage unit, so so you don't have to have that argument. That's the that's the place you're supposed to throw it. You know what I'm saying? So it's I know, filling up. It's one of those things. It's like put it in the storage unit, and you never go and get it anyway. So it's like get rid of this. We had a lot of kids stuff in there that we donated. You know, like uh, stuff that that Serafina grew out of. Yeah. But here, here's one thing I found that was quite interesting. I found my first, and I framed this, my first paycheck I ever got for doing stand-up comedy. Fifteen bucks from the comedy store. Oh. I fr- framed it, never cashed it, and I'm like, why is this in the storage unit? It shouldn't be on display somewhere, like in my bedroom or my closet or whatever. Not bedroom. that I'm gonna hang. Bedroom, no, not, not bedroom. Sorry, my my. I have like a little closet. Bro, n- bro, comedy. You sold out the garden for shows. You broke records. This shit should be in like the comedy museum. Or the, the the fucking Smithsonian. It should be in the lobby in the last <laughs> case at the Hard Rock. At the win. Call the win and go, I got my first paycheck. Let's put it in a glass case in the lobby of the win. <laughs> That's, th- I, bro, top of your game. It would be no different than saying, like, uh, who we compare to top of their game right now. If you're like, oh, hey, Eddie Vedder has got his first paycheck for doing a, a gig with Pearl Jam and a fucking... Th- that's you know, I don't know. Anyway, no, I mean, I like now. Your, I like I like where your head's at. I like where yeah, your head's at. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? There's a uh, comedy uh, museum out in. Um, That's what I'm talking about. The one in Jamestown. Yeah, Jamestown. Yeah. But then I'm it's sure like, they could use know. a new item with the pandemic. <laughs> they're probably hanging on by a thread like the rest of the world. <laughs> right? Not a lot of people go to risk their life to see George Collins' pants from his second fucking live show. <laughs> <laughs> it really it, it it really is a phenomenal museum. I I, I uh I, actually I should call them to see if they need some I money. Know. 
I know. Well, um, I do want to go see it, and I was planning on going to see it, and then this shit hit, you know, and then you got to prioritize, you know? Jack, you want me to go to Walmart yesterday to get a, a rack to dry clothes? I'm like, you want me to risk my life for a $10 rack from China, by the way? It's, like, insane. Like, China's, they don't have the, the virus anymore. It's gone. They, they, yeah, they, they ran out from putting it on packages, rubbing it on packages, and mailing them to us. <laughs> Can you run out of the virus? Oh, uh, by the way, bro, are they making the vaccine in India? Did you see that shit in the news? A factory no. in India that was making the vaccine blew up, bro. Are we getting a vaccine from Bombay? What the fuck, guy? I thought this shit was being made outside of Princeton, New Jersey, with all the scientists <laughs> overlooking it. What are you fucking emailing in the directions to you know uh, Sinjay? <laughs> <laughs> How many quarts do we add to the... Oh, what the fuck? The whole factory burnt down, bro. It's in the news. Oh, God, now we're doing even... two a week. We're like CNN. We're on top of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't even know they were outsourcing the uh, the production of the vaccine. I'm with you. I thought this was in-house, in the <laughs> States. Uh, yeah. Come on. I mean, maybe India is making it for the people of India, but, you know, you, you would think if anyone's making it anywhere in the world, we're getting a piece of that fucking action, right? I mean, 10%. Everybody fork it over. What the <laughs> fuck? Oh, wait. Bro, that's total. I can't do that anymore. Do what? I can't do that. I can't do that. I forgot. Oh, man. The what? Watching, nah, I've been watching my Tucker Carlson. I got to get my... I, 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 you can't... You can't say stuff about America being the best anymore. Like how I just joke, like we should get 10% of everybody's vaccine because yeah. we're yeah. America. <laughs> it's fucking patriotic. I mean, I, I, in Russia, the guy should be saying the same thing in Russian, right? We should get 10% of everybody's. We got Moscow, right? Every country should feel that way. If you don't feel I, that way about your country, that's not my fucking problem. I agree. You know? I agree. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like you want you want stuff for your own family, right? It's like you want stuff for your own family. It's the same thing. Family and friends and everyone and, and my country, everybody, all my fellow people. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, like like you know when you fly home and you land and you're like, "Ah, it's just so good to be back in the states, baby," right? Like did they did they say that everywhere? I think I brought this up before, you know? <laughs> like if you're living in, I don't know, Kazakhstan, <laughs> you're coming in for a landing, wheels down in Kazakhstan, and you're like, so good to be back in Kazi, baby, right? I think, uh, you know, home is where the heart is, man. I think when you land, it's the first thing you say is, say, hey, it's great to be back. Obviously, if you live in the United States, I think it's a little bit more prevalent than other uh, countries that maybe aren't as fortunate uh, as us to have a, a fabulous country, but... Right, I mean, but I want everybody, the whole world, I want prosperity. I'm just proud of my country. That's, yeah, why not? I can't right. say that, guy. I don't even think I can You can't say, say you're proud? Well, proud I think you can't. Boys. No, no, I, oh, boys! No, oh, God, I right? forgot. Yeah. That, you can't say no, proud. No, but I think, I think, listen, I think yesterday, yesterday, I think now, after the inauguration, I think you could say now that you're proud of being American. I think. I oh. think that's, oh. I think that was in the inauguration speech. <laughs> Unity. Does Biden know who's in there? That's an edit. What are we doing? Uh, it's not an edit. Put all that right. in. All right. Fine. All right. Whoa, bro. I feel like I'm watching the Irishman right now. Put that in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, what were you talking about, bro? Speaking of inauguration. Oh, we were on the we were on the storage unit. But look, oh, but yeah. now, but hey, you know, it's like it's how the show goes, man. It's like it starts with one thing, <laughs> next thing you know. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, the inauguration I didn't watch. I was golfing yesterday. Uh, nice. But uh, you know, I, I I don't I don't watch anything live anymore. I just don't do it. Yeah. I, I, it's like uh, nowadays with the amount of access you have to, uh, you know. It's like if I want to see something, I come on, put it on my computer. Inauguration, J Lo. It's up, by the way. The the, <laughs> the entertainment that they had. I know. J Lo, Gaga. I think John Legend was there. And Trump had Vanilla Ice. I mean, oh. it's just like it's like. If you have vanilla ice, don't you just have nobody? 
Right. <laughs> I mean, right? It's like going to the dance. Who can I get? Forget it, I'll go along. <laughs> I mean, holy shit. Now, to your point about the inauguration, I didn't see it either. But the entertainment level, I mean, boy, did all the top stars come back out in droves to the point where my daughter in second grade, they put it on in the class. <laughs> they had the class. And when Sadie got back in the car, she said, goodbye, Trump, like that. And I'm like, oh, somebody's mimicking somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, dude. Oh, God. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah. Literally, I'm going to start a social uh, history class. It's going to be the point where you can only teach history <laughs> on the weekends in your basement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell your friends, here's a flyer. We're going to talk about Paul Revere next week. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody nothing. <laughs> It's getting crazy out there. Oh, man. But yeah, no, I, uh, yeah. So Sadie was saying uh, Lady Gaga, J Lo, and you know, man, here we go. Uh, cheers with my coffee to, uh, to New Times, baby. New right? Times, new guy. You know, let's see what he's got. You know, I'm, I'm that type of guy. Whoever's in there, just want to see what they got and uh, how it affects me personally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll see. It said 100 days, 100 million vaccines. I don't know if they, uh, 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 somebody's better be picking up LA slack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. In, sh in, sh in Chicago, the goal is to have the whole damn state vaccinated by May. My buddy called me. Yeah, May. The whole. I go. Yeah. The goal in L.A. is to have everybody dead by May. <laughs> and there'll be like ten people left, and they'll go. Oh, well, well, we can vaccinate these guys. <laughs> that we got. Oh my goodness, man. Yeah. What a yeah shit no, show. I feel like it's starting. To, it's starting. To, you know. If, I mean, you know. I, you know. Figure it out and get it out there. I guess. I don't expect it for a while. So. So I don't like, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, yeah, life goes so, on to a certain extent. Life does go on. And, and by the way, and, and, and I'll get to the point here, but uh, when, I, when I say those things, uh, you know, I know your father had passed away from COVID. I, I, I hope you don't take offense that I said everybody oh. dead in LA. And oh, I, I, oh, I, you know what? I, honestly, I didn't even put two and two right together. This head. show uh, was well, an escape for me. <laughs> Thank okay, you. I, I, now I'm choked I, I, up. <laughs> no, no, no. No, <laughs> no, no I really just, didn't. I get it. I totally do. But I appreciate you saying that. But it's going to lead me to my next point. All right. And I forgot to tell you this. Yeah. I got a request to do a podcast. Uh, it's about a month ago. The guy's name is slipping my mind. But, you know, every once in a while I'll get these requests. Hey, you want to do my podcast? You want to do my podcast? And I was like, eh, you know, like, I'm like, eh, do I want to, what do I want to do a podcast for? I like, get, get on, I say the same stuff. Right, right. But this guy sent a link about his story. This guy, eight, eight, eight years old. He's in his garage. He's playing with a gasoline tank. You know, like how you know, boys do. Just, and I guess he lit a match and basically uh, blew up the garage with himself in it. 90% uh, of his body on fire, uh, bur burnt, third degree burns, and um, probably ain't going to make it. I mean, the, the doctors, I think this is not going to make it. And, but this all happened in St. Louis, and uh, Joe Buck famous uh announcer in st louis got wind uh, is it joe who's uh who's the father you know they got B buck the the guy now joe is it joe buck do you know i'm not sure no i don't oh god what the hell's his name famous broadcaster right broadcaster i, yeah. I know his son's jo is his son joe anyway uh. the eldest buck <laughs> got the uh, wind of it Went into the hospital and told the kid, you're going to make it, kid. And the kid couldn't see, but he knew the voice because he's a big St. Louis Cardinals fan. Long story short, this guy ends up coming out of it, 
the interesting part, uh, uh, point of the story is that the kid lost his fingers. He had like nubs. Uh-huh. And Buck sent him an autographed Ozzy Gian baseball. And he said, if you want another baseball from another baseball player, you got to write a thank you note to Ozzy Gian. And you have to write it. So the kid ends up writing 64 thank you notes because he wrote the thank you note again. Got another ball. Then he wanted another ball. So that was his motivation to right. r learn to write again. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. This guy's a motivational speaker, <clears throat> book. He's married. He's got four beautiful kids. I go, I got to meet this guy. Right. I got to do his podcast. Unbelievable story. All right. So. I'm on the guy's podcast, and they're talking about, he's talking about my physicality, my facial expressions, how I act out the jokes. I said, yeah, you know, in today's society, you basically got to light yourself on, f and I'm like, oh, my God. Now, <laughs> now I've said this line yeah. before when people ask me. Basically, yeah. the line is I got to set myself on fire for people to pay attention because people got no... No attention span anymore. Right, right, right. And I, I've always said it in interviews yeah. and whatnot, but I said it to a guy that lit himself on fire, right? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, right. I go to the guy. I go to the guy. Oh my god, because I didn't. I didn't say lit. I, I caught it off at lit yourself. I go, bro. I'm so sorry, man. I, this is. I, I normally. That's kind of. I just blanked. I'm so. He's like, oh no, you got to finish the sentence though. He goes, you got I'm gonna make you finish that sentence. Oh, this is oh. getting awkward. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm starting to get a little hot under the collar just hearing this. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, so whoa, whoa. I I said, hey, I, I said, you light yourself on fire, but I said I, I totally had a brain fart there. He goes, Oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. But I was like, oh my god. The Bad one, the one guy, the one guy that that burned ninety percent of his body. I do that line too, and I'm like, what the hell? Let's talk about the storage. Let's talk about the storage unit. There's uh, my it. favorite show that you haven't watched yet called Animal Kingdom. I'm going into season four, but my favorite character probably in it is Ellen Barkin. They call her Smurf, and she had big, big story plot in it. Uh, storage facility just like yours in california that's where she kept all her goods man so you never know you have no idea the person next to you could be a bank robber putting fucking jewelry uh, pardon me trying not to curse putting jewelry in there wait until the uh, time goes by to fence it so if they did an auction yours would suck memory and photos and shit and you know they want no. they want money and <laughs> shit <laughs> listen I often thought that when I'm walking down the storage unit, if you took every one of these garage doors and flung them open, right? Yeah. And you started looking in there going, what the hell is this guy doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how many of those you think, out of 100 garages, how many of the storage units would you look into and have that reaction? A percentage. What would you say? Well, I mean, what, when you say, what the hell is he doing, like, out of 100, are you saying how many is something illegal inside? Not illegal, weird. Like, if you open weird. One, one up and it's got a, the whole thing I, is stuffed animals. Out of 100, I'd say, like, what the fuck, weird? I'd say, <laughs> I'm thinking at least 67, 68, man. Come on. That's why you get those things, right? That, that's what they're for. Dead so bodies and shit, stuffed dogs. <laughs> Absolutely. So you, think, you think seventy percent of the garages are there because they got weird things they're storing? Like you walked into mine, you'd see kids stuff, you'd see some fabric from some uh, couches we had made, and had the extra wa extra wallpaper, extra. Uh. Tile. Uh, you ever watch Storage Wars? No. 
Well, that's a show where they flip them yeah. open and then you can't go in, but you can peek. And yours would be terrible. They would be pissed for auction and like, you know, for yours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you there's, want not, there's nothing. In, like Lana found her old gym bag, her g- uh, gymnastic gym bag with the, the, the wrist strap she used to wear. I was from Memphis, Tennessee. How old, how old she was, was she when she wore that stuff? 15, so she was probably about 30. It's probably 30 years old. And she smelled the bag. She's, ah, it still smells like fucking a sweaty feet. Pedophilia black market. Pedophilia <laughs> black market. <laughs> Not even kidding, bro. Are you kidding me? 13-year-old girls, gym shit, and it still smells like her? From, oh, oh, bro, listen. I oh, man, this whole show is fucked up. <laughs> this is a fucked up show. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, there's wackos out there, man. Probably a black market for that stuff. You never know. <laughs> out of 100 storage units, do you think there's one corpse uh, of some sort? A mummified child? Uh, you know, <laughs> bro, you're an L.A. guy. You are an L.A. man. Oh, my uh, God. Uh, are you talking in L.A. or are you thinking a storage unit across the country? Is there a body? Oh, yeah. There's, if you went through, if tomorrow the FBI raided every storage unit in America, I'd say 10 corpses. Yeah, but a corpse smells. How are you going to get away with that? Yeah, you can do a rap job and, like, mummify it. <laughs> yeah. Mummify. Uh, yeah. God, where's Lou when you need him? <laughs> yeah. You can do a rap you can mummify job. a body. Absolutely, bro. What are you talking about? I know, but if you mummify a body, does that, does that uh, take away the stench? Yeah, yeah. Like, come on. You ever hear, like, uh, oh, they got into the house and the, and the guy's wife was... You know, wrapped in stuff for three years, she was there. Like the smell eventually, actually, no, but you got a mum if you wrap it, yeah, I think you'd be fine. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Could you? Uh, I don't want to get into that, but like, can I? Uh, I don't know. Well, uh, I got a, can I flip it around and ask you something? Yeah, yeah. I don't know where we're at, but, um, so the other day, Sadie has a girlfriend of hers come over for a play date on the weekend, right? Another seven-year-old, been here for like three three hours, wonderful young girl, you know, for her classmate. They do the slime, da-da-da. I think I, I was doing it the last cast with you, the one midweek that we just did. So when we finished, I came out. They still were going to be here for about a half hour. Now, I got Sadie from Santa, this big... She does karate now. It's this big kickboxing thing, and these things light up, and you hit it, and it goes, gotcha, gotcha, knockout. So I hold it up, and they start punching it, and every time they hit it, I'm falling back, and they're dying laughing. Now, nobody, you know, is touching me, right? You know, I'm falling back. And then at one point, I go to walk away, and each of them grabs my, you do that thing, you know, a kid puts his uh, body around your foot so you can't walk, you know? It's like if you... And I don't move because I got a kid that's not mine on one foot. You know what I'm saying, bro? Oh, and I'm like, Sadie, man. no, guys, no playing around like this. No, and, you know, and they stopped right away. And then we just did the boxing thing again. And, no, you know, and nobody, you know, and I'm not talking pandemic. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about just question to you. Uh, is it OK I, to play fight? With another person's child, if your child is involved in that play fight. No, oh, man. In 1970? Yeah. I, right? I'm, I'm totally with you. That's why, I mean, hitting the thing is nothing. I was just holding it up for them like, like a body bag. They weren't touching me. But that's why I shut it down um, because but that's unheard sh- of. What? Did you shut it down because you felt uncomfortable or did you shut it down because the environment we're living in today? Oh, God, I shut it down because I felt uncomfortable. I, as soon as, like I said, when I'm holding this big bag, that's fine. We could do that for 20 minutes. No, I'm just holding it like a boxing trainer. No one's touching me. But once you guys started to wrestle my feet and I said, no, 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 we're not doing any of that. Then when Sadie's friend left, I said to Sadie, listen, 
Your father only wrestles with you. Do you understand? Or your cousins, you know, my brother's kids. That's it, all right? I don't wrestle. And when you go to other people's house, do you wrestle with their dad? And she's like, oh, no, I never. I'm like, all right, all right, just making sure. You're right there with that, right, bro? No, I, I, I'm, I'm with you here. I'll give you another scenario, though. Yeah. You're in the pool with your kid. Yeah. And, and uh. she's got a friend there. And you're throwing the kid in the water. And then the kid goes, oh, can you throw me, Mr. Corioli? And you go, nah. <laughs> no, no, that's a, that's a great question. And we have good friends we go to the pool with. And uh, no, that's a different thing. I throw all the kids. I do. I even What's the difference? You're getting the kid. The, the, the difference is that dad is sipping a beer with his shades on, eyeballing me like the fucking Secret Service, you know? So everything's on the up and up, and he's like, you're playing, and I'm friends with the dad, you know? Like, when this girl left, her father, who I just met, I mean, I've seen him at the gym, and he's a nice man. He's standing in my doorway. I go, come on in, and he's standing there, and she goes... Daddy, we beat up Sadie's daddy. We play fight and beat up Sadie. And, and, and I look at him and I go, I, I held the bag. I held the bag. They, they hit the bag and I pretend that I was falling down. And he's like, oh, oh. Because right away, I'm sure he was like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> if I can wrestle him with my kid, she's here three hours and you're capping it off with a wrestling match. She's seven and a girl. <laughs> you know? Uh, it, it, if, it's, if it's boys, does it? Make a difference. It's ah, like, yeah, it does make a little bit a little bit of a difference because people like you and I, you know, we're cool. But like if I had dropped my boy off at some guy's house and he's like balding down the middle with thick glasses and they're foggy and he's like, We wrestled. <laughs> 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 I'm like, hey, hey, 911, I'm not even going to leave. I'm going to be fucking standing here at the doorway. We're doing a DNA test before we leave anyway. Or whatever. What do you call it? A fucking <laughs> guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How about you? You're right. <laughs> so you're saying, you're saying based on how we look, it's okay. Like if like if yeah. if I didn't know you as a father, right, right, and yeah. I had my kid come over, and you know Caruso came over, was eight years old, and you had a son, and mm. I come to pick up Caruso, and I go, "What'd you guys do, Caruso?" And I go, "Oh, we wrestled with Mr. Corielli." I go, yeah. Oh, "Well, yeah, nothing happened." What's not? Yeah. My bro, look at my hair. <laughs> Pedophiles don't have hair, guy. <laughs> they lose their hair because they're so worried they're gonna get busted any fucking second. Because they know that shit's crazy. <laughs> look at us. I would look at you, same thing. I'd be like, oh, what did he do? Hold you down, yeah, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? Oh god. So it's so anyway, then. Uh, Sadie, I pick her up from school first day back, and she goes, oh, it was so funny. You know, her friend said to uh, the teacher in front of her, she goes, you know, let's let's say the friend's name is Nancy. I was just Nancy. Nancy said to her teacher, Sadie's dad beat us up yesterday. We wrestled with him, and we, we beat up Sadie's dad yesterday. And I go, what did the teacher say? And she's, Sadie's like, oh, she just, she's like, oh, like that. And I was what like, the teacher oh, she was, what? <laughs> what the teacher yeah, she was, she was, she was right now. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> <laughs> She's writing down notes and speed dial and child services with her other hand. Absolutely, bro. I'm expecting a knock on the door any minute. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. <laughs> By the way, you know, not to segue into this weirdly enough, but Caruso is, bro, I, he skipped cute. Like I said, this, this guy's like handsome. <laughs> Already <laughs> handsome. The daughter, too. I saw her, by the way. Uh, smashing um, those things on your, those suction things on your forehead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny to me how, like, they, your daughter is hitting you with everything she's got. And she, like, they have no concept yet. None. Of, 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 you know, it's interesting. You'll see when she starts to get a little older and you got to go, whoa, hey, yeah, yeah, listen, that actually hurt. Well, no, she, she was doing this full thrust. Yeah, and what really, what really kind of hurt was when she started taking them off my head and oh, knocking them off. off. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, there, it's it's it happens so quick because you get so like a enough, but then she's laughing, so it's like that supersedes any pain. 
Like if wow. if I'm ble- if my daughter makes me bleed, yeah, and she's dying laughing, I go with the laugh over the bleed, right? Yeah. Wow. It's <laughs> no, no. It's fascinating. I mean, seriously, you almost sound like Robin Williams. You know, if if I'm in pain, but they're laughing, the laughter is better than the pain. You know what I mean? It's pretty heavy, actually, when you think about it. Over- <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same. It's the same concept. She's whipping, knocking these things, pulling your skin awfully close to the two hundred thousand dollar plugs. If we go back to season two, but you're letting up because she's laughing, and yeah. you're just just a comic. At the end of the day, you're just a comic. That's it. I'm just the the, the the that laugh, especially out of my daughter or my son, is is like gold. It's it's better than making twenty thousand people laugh at once. That yeah. laugh, if I could get if I could get her going like that, gold. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So uh That's yeah, what they remember. Could, yeah, I mean those again, silver lining here on the pandemic, that might have not happened if I was in St. Louis doing a show. So you get these times with your kids that, you know, can't they can't it's like it's like yeah. ingrained in her head now. Although I don't know. Yeah. Do you remember anything from three and a half years old? You know, not so much. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you like you you technically might have been able to up until now just plop them both in front of a television. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Somehow somehow they do like I feel like you have images. Do you remember anything from when you were three? I mean, here and there, you know, I mean, glimpses. I remember little moments. I remember sitting at the kitchen table in this apartment that we had, and we had a bird cage above the table off to the left. I remember talking to my mom. I don't know what we were saying, but, you know, like you just remember like little Little bursts. Yes, yes. same thing. Um, you know, I, but, same thing. But here's an interesting dynamic. Now that we're in the this technology age, where we're filming all this stuff, right, and then playing it back, like Serafina, I'll film and she's like, "Let me see, let me see," and I'll yeah. show her what we just filmed. Does that give you? another layer of memory in the brain when you do something and then you watch it back and then you're able to recall it when you're 21 years old. I I don't know. We haven't seen that yet, but you know, it's like, think about if you grew up and you're going to work at like 21 years old when you, what was that? Was that the United Airways when you were cold caller for United? Yeah. You're on your way to work, and uh, as you commute, and you're like, you know, let me take a look at my myself playing soccer when I was two, <laughs> and you just because you have it on your phone because someone yeah, sent yeah. it to you, so you so it's always there. That is kind of weird. I wouldn't want that. Well, here's another question you you bring up: when you're 21 and your life has basically been videoed and photoed. Do you have those videos now on your phone? Like, will, will, will Serafina have her baby photos on her phone? If she wants it, though, that's what I'm saying. Like, by the time Serafina is, like, old enough to have her own phone, what's to say she can't turn around, text Lana, and go, Mom, me and my friends are all sharing baby photos. Can you just send me a couple baby photos? Do you have them on your phone or on your computer? Sure, I'll send them to you. Boom. And then you got it. I just got my well, birth certificate the other day. For what? When I went through my dad's stuff, when I went home, his files and stuff, I found my birth certificate in there. Um, my brothers and sisters weren't in there. And I said to my mother, where are this? And she's like, they're adults. They got them years ago. <laughs> 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 so I go, well, I'm taking mine then. I was born at 8, eight o'clock in the morning. I knew I was a <laughs> So, yeah, you know, let alone a photo of myself. I mean, but yeah, y'all kids are going to grow up with all that, right? I mean, whoa, sorry. Right. And then yeah. and then they're going to meet a guy. And first date, he, he, you want to see a photo of me when I was in Little League, when I was in three? And then everything's lost. <laughs> then you don't have that thing where 
where you could say, probably said the line on a date where you described how good you looked in your soccer uniform. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you lose that description and then having the person make a mental image of what you might have looked like that as a kid. Now it's all there. It's video, it's photos, it's the whole thing. There's no imagination anymore. There's nothing. Yeah. Uh, well, I got a great example of that. Do you mind me saying real quick? Yeah, yeah. There's a place in Jamestown, the same place where the comedy thing is, where there's this porcelain statue. There's this old cemetery, and there's this porcelain statue of a woman in a wedding dress. And it's almost basically life-sized, and it's all glass encased. And you can even Google it. And the story for years has always been, even when I started dating Jackie, and we ended up going for a drive through Jamestown, she's like, oh, I want to show you the tomb of a woman, she was killed, sadly, in a car accident in the limousine or something on her wedding night, or somehow she was killed on a wedding night. Uh, and the father who was rich had her buried, had her dress cleaned and had her dre- buried in her dress and had it glass encased, you know? And then you go and you see it and you're like, oh my God, you know? It's wow. like, so, <laughs> right. Now we tell Sadie about this. Now she's seven and we've driven by a few times and you try and look and you can't see it. So last week, Jackie goes, so Sadie, after we get the skis on our way home, we're going to stop and we're going to go in the cemetery and show you the woman in the wedding dress. Sadie was so excited, right? We go in, we're driving around, we finally find it. There it is, fuck, it's snowing. So we all get out, we're running through the snow and you look up, it's glass encased, bro, totally cool. It's a dress, but you can't tell if it's like, coping like that that light cement or is it coated in cement is it really a dress you know as an adult you can start to look at it a little and tell i don't know i don't think this is a real dress so what do we do we're driving home oh we google it turns out it's all a statue and the woman died of tuberculosis and the rich husband paid a guy from italy to make a statue that looked like a Oh, and then when we're done telling the story, Sadie goes, she's in the back of the car, and she goes, nah, I wish it was just that she died on a wedding night. That was the coolest story. Ruined because of Google. <laughs> right, bro? I mean, I yeah. love not knowing anything. That all bullshit was what got us through. That's what I'm saying, man. This is like, it's a... It's a blessing and a curse, this Google. You know, there's some great stuff that's got, but then sometimes it just crashes a beautiful story. Man. Yeah. By yeah. the way, is, is Sadie still in a in a car seat? Uh, yeah, she's, well, not a car seat. What do you call it? That, just the thing that makes her a little higher? Yeah, I don't I don't even know. I don't even know, like, uh, when like did they a, get out of, when, when did they get out of the car seat? I mean, how old are we talking? No, I don't know. Like, um, when I sometimes now around town, I let her sit in the front with me and work the radio, and then we pull in, and Jackie's always mad. What are you doing? She can't be in the front. I'm like, what? I, when can she? I don't know. I mean, the kid's tall. We're good. Yeah. Well, Serafina's like, she's like, Daddy, I can't wait till I ride up there with you. And I was ready to pull the car off over and go get up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you were gonna pull over. I thought you'd just be like, climb over, don't step on the, <laughs> don't step on the armrest. <laughs> I is, thought it was the cutest thing I've ever heard. I was like, is. oh, you know, like get up here. What do I got this? for seven and a half years? I gotta go. So anyway, I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm trying to teach a lesson through my eyes in the fucking mirror. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you, bro. Wait till you, uh, uh, have you let us <coughs> sit on your lap yet and steer in a parking lot or anything? We we drive around the neighborhood. Like with her on your lap driving them? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And she's steering. And I go, hey, make, you know, th- th- straighten it out, straighten it out, you know? Sometimes. But then I, this, I had to put a, fuck, I had to put a kibosh on this uh-huh. because she was starting a car. I'm like, this kid finds the keys. That's She's right. off and running. Right? Are you kidding me, man? I came out to the car once and she had it started too. Started. And I'm like, you don't press the button. How did you know to step on the gas? Because I seen you. But dude, our kids, by the time they're 13 years old, they're going to fucking be on hitting the road. They'll meet each other in Kansas. Shit. That's a thing too, man. I mean, do you think when your daughter is old enough, 
Do you think you think she could sneak out on you and you wouldn't wake up in the middle of the night? Do the thing where they sneak out and get back before you wake up? Well, let me tell you. Um, I used to sleepwalk when I was a kid. So wow. Wow. about eight, nine years old, I got out of bed, came downstairs, took a bite out of an apple, and walked out the screen door, and I ended up next door uh, at my neighbor's house. So I rang the doorbell. My neighbor came to the door in a negligee. I remember, I rem and she's like, what are you doing? And she let me in. She called my mom and dad. And she said, do you know where your son is? And they're like, yeah, he's sleeping. He goes, he's here in my bedroom. Oh, whoa. And like a start of a good porno. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Get me all hopped up, bro. <laughs> and I'll send them back over to you in about 30 minutes, Rose. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Come on. Eight years old, man. That was, if, I was oh, if I was 15, I was 15, that's the story. Okay. All oh, right. You're right. You're right. Eight years old, man. Did, now, did you, did she, when you were over there, did she wake you up or when did you realize you were... Not home. I remember doing the, all of this. So I was conscious, but I was sleepwalking. Like, and that's a fear I got. My kids just opening up the side door and they're off. Oh, you know, like, I don't know. You know I, uh, listen, I wake up at the, if the house creaks, I'm up. However, with this new fasting I've been doing, just yeah. eating soup, olives, and crackers. Yeah, yeah. My deep sleep has gone from mm, 45, 50 minutes a night to an hour and 20, where I'm starting to dream again. I'm starting to dream again and remember my dreams. With the food that I was eating, I think, and the uh, and the alcohol in intake, my sleep was so light that I wasn't getting that recharged at, at night. Wow. But I got to tell you. Wow, man. That's fascinating. The food I've been eating has definitely been affecting not only my sleep, but I was so inflamed. Like my 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 belly was like it still is, but you know my, my belly you could tell was a lot of visceral fat. My uh, inflamed my, visceral fat. I mean, what am I a nurse? I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're saying, guys. <laughs> what are these terms? What oh, visceral mean, fat is the fat that, What does that mean? The interior, I mean, like like bloated. You know, a lot of lot of bloating. You know, uh, not you necessarily. Got heavy? <laughs> what? You got heavy? Yeah, have, heavy, but you start to see, like, the stomach kind of protrude out, uh, and it's like a lot of visceral fat, which lies around the uh, the waistline. Oh, that's what that and, means. All right. And and I was, and, and now doing this fast for four days, that bloatedness, you know, it's not fat where it's blubber. It's like, it's like the belly kind of protrudes out a little I'm, bit. That, and then, if I have ice cream two, three nights in a row, I, I got that right there. And I'm like, that's yeah. ice cream. I look at it and I go, that's ice cream. Disgusting. Yeah. But I, I mean, for me, disgusting. I'm not saying your sitch. But yeah, all right. I'm with you. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so, so this, so this uh, I'm, 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 I dropped about four pounds. Listen, I started the, the I started January 1st at 205 and a half, which is, I think the heaviest I've ever been was 207 and a half coming off a cruise with Lana's family after we did the cruise in Alaska. I couldn't even fit in my pants. But uh, 205 and a half is pretty pretty heavy. I'm down now to 198. Nice. Now that's we're 20 we're 20 days into the to the month. I'm down to 198 and and dropping more. I want to get to about 185. That's my ideal fighting weight. Well, that's good though that that it's been a nice slow going down. I feel like that that's fat that uh, that's weight that you're not going to put right back on because you're losing it properly, seemingly over time. You know what I mean? Like if you well, just yeah. lost six pounds in th three days, I'd be like, "Well, shit, guy." 
Yeah, that, that's it's not it's not like uh, this is rapid. I mean, tw- twenty uh, twenty days, seven pounds. I think a lot of it's been water. I think a lot of it's been not drinking. You know, that I, is I stopped, rapid actually. That's more than I realize. Well, I think I, I eliminated a lot of stuff. I mean, listen, when you start eliminating bagels in the morning, yeah. wine at night, cheese, uh, you know, sushi with uh, with soy sauce, which is high in sodium. You start eliminating that, you start seeing the pounds fly off, and it's not like because you're doing some drastic diet. It's just like you basically eliminated a lot of the stuff that was putting the weight on. So I don't know. After I come out of this, I got a whole new diet. Everything is going to be light, fruit, uh, fish, uh, vegetables. Um, I feel good, man. I feel clear-headed. I feel like... uh, I start shooting Good. the show February 8th for Discovery Plus. I think nice. uh, we got some really, really cool ideas for that, um, which I can't wait to get into. And, uh, you know, I'll be vaccinated, uh, you know, probably beginning of 2038. <laughs> That's it, baby. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, what else did I have for you? That's what else that, you got? You got you got. I heard you have some you have some questions. Well, or well, no, we, I'm, I've been I, I've been kind of asking as we go, but I wanted to say, um, you should say to your manager, try and find me a movie role where the guys, you know, I have to lose weight for the part. You know what I mean? Like, like one of those where you got the part, but before we start filming, right? If Spielberg told you before we start filming, I just need you to get down to one seventy. For Steven Spielberg, you get down to 170, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was talking to Lana about that. You know, with uh, with my life, I feel like I've often lost weight when something big is on the horizon, whether it be a special, a wedding. Like when I when I when I got married, I was at 182. It's the lightest I've ever been in my adult life, I think. Uh, so I always work better with things that are a big, uh, that I'm getting ready for, but I want to make it more of a lifestyle now than, okay, you got the TV show that yeah. shoots February 8th to March 26th and at March 27th, I'm going to hop back on the cheese wagon again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that, especially now, you know, getting, you know, almost 50 in three years. Uh, I just want to be, you know, here. Yeah. Man, I don't want to, I, 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 you know, I got to, oh, I got a January 31st, I got a doctor's appointment checking the levels, right? Yeah. And th- those are always like anxiety for me because I go in there, he's going to draw the blood, and then I get the call, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get the call. And the first thing I, I tell him, I think I told you this before. He, he's like, "Hey, this is this is uh, you know the, the doctor." And then the first question, "Am I am I dying?" That's what I ask him. Am I dying? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. He's probably like right away telling him, "Listen, we got to put a uh, put a rush on his tests before this guy gets home." He's already freaking out. Do you make your own doctor's appointments, by the way, or does Lana set all that up? Uh, I make my own doctor's appointment, and you bring up a good point. Everything is so quick now, right? You want you want the uh, Amazon, you want some Amazon. It's here in two hours. Blood test, forty eight hours. Why are we waiting so long for these results? Oh, I don't know. I know. I went to the dentist two days ago. They put this thing that went around my head, sit my ass in the chair. No sooner I sit in the chair, I'm looking up at my entire jaw structure. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Instantly. Instantly, man. Yeah. Yeah. Another implant, by the way. Boy, I got more titanium in me than a bionic man. <laughs> I go, what's this thing made of? He goes, same thing your hip's made of. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you got a magnet. It's just going to fly out of your hand and stick to me. <laughs> I don't know, though, bro. It is insane. About How is the hip, though? Hip we feels good, man. It. Hip feels like, I mean, just great. Could you run? 
Could I run before? You know what I mean? Not really. I mean, I, I can jog, but I don't, I don't do any, any more impact, anything like that. I do elliptical and bike, and I keep it like that. There was something I wanted to ask you. Oh, yeah. I asked you about the appointment because I got in a fight with Jackie yesterday. Now, uh, she wasn't talking to me. I was wrong, said some things I shouldn't have, uh, and she, she shut it down. And to her credit, man, Never came around. She said, I don't want to talk to you all day. Even even did that thing at night where she's watching TV and I come back out of my office. Hey, what's up? What? What do you want? I'm like, well, man, she's keeping it going all the way to the end. Wow. You know? Commitment. Yeah. So so I, for a minute, started to get a little bullheaded. And I'm like, you know what, man? I'm going to start doing my own stuff. Take care of my own shit. And if she doesn't want to talk to me, that's fine. I mean, I was wrong. I apologize. So I have two contact lenses left. So right away, I go, all right, I got to order new contact lenses. And right away, I go, oh, man, where do we go now? Who's our doctor? I'm like, we used to go to a place on Central Avenue. I don't think we go there anymore. Shit, do we go to the other place? And I realized, bro, I don't do anything, man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So like I'm. Don't, don't, don't tell me. What? Huh. You're, you're you're the guy where like guy, like he gets it old right eighties eighty five and the wife passes away before you you're yeah. telling me you're completely lost oh wait, wait, listen I I'm gonna need Jackie before she passes away to help me <laughs> order a bride online. <laughs> Listen, maybe you're going to do a Google over here to the Philippines or something like that. You're going to help me with one last delivery. <laughs> so, wait, she, I got I to gotta, I gotta map this out for the listeners. She's in charge of making doctor's appointments, refilling your your uh, your contact like lenses. Like, I'll go, Jack, I'm, at, I'm running out of contacts. And she's like, uh, she'll go, all right, well, I, you're going to have to, I think you passed your appointment. When's the last time you got your eyes checked? And I'm like, I'll go, I don't know. And she'll go, well, I'll look it up. Uh, I'll call. And then it's usually been over a year. So she'll be like, all right, you have an appointment for da-da-da. Just go in. And I'm like, all okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, she does. God, she does everything does she, for me. Does she pay all the all the bills? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I know. <laughs> I mean, the best I do with the, with the money is once in a while. I can't see. You got a phone call or something? Uh, yeah, phone calls oh. coming in, but my wife wow. is supposed to get this. But it, it, t talk about responsibilities. You know, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like, that's a uh, come on, answer the phone. <laughs> Can you believe it? And the phone is ringing throughout the house too. It's, this is uh, this is this is the main gate. They're calling the house and me and her at the same time. Nothing. What? <laughs> I see you now. What? Oh, uh, it's the guys. The guys are here to drop off the thing, and she's still not answering. All right. So listen. Yeah. She pays the bills. She makes your appointment. Does she, she do the grocery shopping? Yeah, even, by the way, when she does the bills, once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll walk by and go, uh, she doesn't do them every day, you know, it's, I'll go, how's she looking? You know, like, I don't even know how much money we got in there. I just, you know, I got it coming from different various sources, so. It's just, okay, just, listen, I gotta, I gotta ask you, and I think this is on everybody's mind, if you ain't working, what are you doing? Like, like, what is your responsibilities at the house? I, uh, my newsletter <laughs> <laughs> and this cast and this cast. <laughs> oh, that, that, take, that takes up three hours during the week. <laughs> <coughs> no, seriously. Do you right, dress? Uh, your, do, a you dre do you dress yourself? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, though, when I go to bed at night, um, if, if I'm going to wear, like a lot of times, most of the time, what I'm wearing to go to bed at night, I'm going to wear in the morning when I wake up. So when I go to bed, I just take everything off and it like lands on the bathroom floor and stuff and on the floor. So she goes the other day. Can't you even, you don't even get a fucking hook. 
You don't even get like what kind of grown man just throws I, their I, clothes. And I'm like, I'm with the, I'm what, with what, what, what are you, a widow? And, and this is your first date with a new guy, Jack? You've been with me. For, I've been throwing them on the floor for 20 years. And she's like, for 20 years, I've been yelling at you. She fucking, I know. I, I wish, so, like, if I try to be like a guy like you or Clooney esque, and I'm like, I would do that for like a day or two. I hang my clothes and like my toothbrush and do all, but I just, it's a lot of work. And by day three, I'm just throwing the clothes on the floor again. I'm going back to... Now, I do a lot at home, though. I feel bad. She's going to hear this. I do a lot. I mean, when she comes home with the groceries, I help unload them. I help do the dishes all the time. I vacuum the whole house. I make the bed in the morning. I obviously spend time with Sadie. Yeah, so... I'm just right, saying, I mean, she's the she's the captain, man, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah so anyway, so she she's running the ship. And when she didn't talk to me, it was like, I don't know how it is. Have that ever happened with you, Alana, where she doesn't talk to you all day? No. See, that's that's the beauty here is we're always talking. Uh, even when we're upset, we can't go the silent treatment. My father was a master at this. My father oh, yeah. would go. My father would go silent for three days. <laughs> my dad I, I could have some good runs, but that's impressive, man. Uh, yeah, my mother would be like, "Are, are you going to talk?" He <clears throat> wouldn't even respond. Like it was like. Now if he would do that to you if he was mad at you too, right? Like if. He was, yeah, but like my it was more like my mother. Oh, and okay. Him. You know, he, like yeah. he would go into a steep silent. And would drive my mother crazy. My mother would want to talk it out. And yeah. my my father would die like a statue. Wow. Right? Yeah. So my question to you is, how do you break that silence? How did you, she come out of it? She never usually does that, which is why I'm bringing it up. So usually within an hour or something, you know, but this time she was particularly annoyed. But then, you know... Because we both got a certain amount of class. Sadie comes home. Neither of us are letting Sadie know that we're, like, not talking. So she'd start to, like, answer. That's the thing. Then I ask her something with Sadie around. And in my head, I'm like, what are you going to answer me in front of the kid? What kind of volatile situation are we raising her in? You know? <laughs> so, but then this morning... Uh, you know, and then when I went to see her at the end of the night last night, she was like, I just, I, I want to watch my show. Just leave me alone. Right. And then, uh, this morning she called down she was like, good morning. And I'm like, nice. The freeze is over. It's like, uh, what do they call when you, when you stop uh, buying stuff from another country? I forget what they would, they do it all the time. But anyway, Embar embargo, I don't know one of those words like, <laughs> i mean i just moped around all day you know i didn't have the, the contact place name and then you know i got flowers and i didn't know who they were from and she did and i'm like she's not telling me i was a whole thing yeah no you, it sounds like you got to maintain direct communication with your wife in order for you to survive <laughs> <I mean. laughs> I mean, if this, i realized <laughs> this 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 one of what Another 24 hours, you might have been blind and hungry. I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, got, you got a point. Luckily, she had made a large soup. So uh, I, at least last night, I'm like, well, even if she don't serve me, I can at least scoop, <laughs> scoop this shit into a bowl and heat it up. I mean, a monkey can do that. You know? <laughs> but we're out of soup, man. So luckily, we made up. Oh, Are God. we, um, you know, moving forward? What's the plan with this cast? How you feeling about the what are we doing? You know, uh time wise, you know, a couple of you know, I don't know. Last time you didn't want to bring it up, you were like might have some surprises. Oh, this is the surprise. Uh, uh, but uh, can they expect it next week? What are you thinking, man? Well, I don't I don't know. I mean, listen. <laughs> my fear, my fear yeah. when we were doing two a week, and maybe it's it's changed definitely, but remember when we were doing two a week. And about 20 minutes in, we'd go, show sucks. Don't have anything, right? I, I feel yeah. now we could get on here and just go. We could do it five days a week, I think. Yeah. Right? I agree. I agree now. It's it's way easier. Like, uh, we, yeah, this is an ebb and flow, and of course. But, yeah, I, I do remember that, man. I I can't tell you how many times... 
like my day, my my weekend gets affected by this cast. Cast. If I feel it wasn't funny, I'm like I come out of here and I'm in a bad mood. And if I feel it was real good, then I'm like, Phew. I'm nicer to my family. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> No, it's like it's, it's like a bad set. You have a bad set. You walk off. It's like you're in a bad mood, and and you can't wait yeah. to get back up on stage again. So yeah, same yeah. thing with same thing with the cast. Um, um, yeah. Did I, did I tell you I put together a popcorn machine? Did I tell you this? No. Well, you, like how many? Like a lot of directions. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just show it to you. It's over there. You see it? Oh, I like those. I've always wanted one of those. One of those old-fashioned ones with the wheels. Yeah. I got to tell you, bro. Yeah. It's changed the movie experience for us. I bet. That's, I got to get that for Jackie. Next big gift. Talk to me I, here. That good popcorn? Yeah, we're still trying to master the popcorn. We don't do microwave popcorn. We always do it on the stove with that thing. I don't think yeah. we gave you one that yeah, really we, pop, which is great. When we really, it's a lot of work, but when we really want to treat ourselves, we use that because it makes the best popcorn. It really does. Yeah, you can't you can't beat stovetop popcorn, in my opinion. The microwave, yeah, yeah. but you get a little stuff. And then this is like, and I'm not a big movie popcorn guy as far as going to the movies and getting popcorn people say they yeah. love movie popcorn i don't really care for it i like um i like homemade popcorn uh of course i like a lot of butter on the popcorn but we don't do that just because you know i'd die of a heart attack in the middle of the movie <laughs> but uh lana lana makes the best popcorn i've ever had um colorado kernels it's called uh uh, they're from Colorado. I'll get the the name for you next next cast. Uh, God, what are they called? Denver. Yeah, Colorado. It's small kernels. I like a small. I don't. I don't like yeah. a big puffy kernel. Do you? Do you like the when the popcorn's big? I'm not much of a that much of a popcorn guy, but um, I like more honestly the when they the caramel. What do you call it? Um, Oh God, forget it. That's that's yeah. come on. Uh, yeah, Car caramel corn guy. But yeah, you got us popcorn. It was small, and it threw me off because I was like, "What's with this shit?" But it was fantastic because yeah. I always equate the bigger and puffier with the more delicious. But that's not the case in the no. popcorn world, is it? No, bro. I'm telling you, uh, Boulder Pop. That's what it's called, Boulder Pop. That's the popcorn we got you. It's our favorite yeah. popcorn. It's yeah, it was. It was really delicious. So. Lana gets this thing cooking because yeah. we're doing like we're doing like uh, not movie nights, but we're doing we're watching Succession uh, on HBO right now, and uh, she comes up here and gets it going, and I walk in, and I got to tell you, it's like walking into a, a Cineplex with the smell. Oh man, and, that's awesome! And the and the and and the sound of the popcorn hitting the the tin and it's coming out it's spilling over it's like oh <laughs> and then what i, I, I love did it. i love it to add, add to the experience but i think we got to take these out because that's all we're doing is eating this i put about mm, 10 glass jars of different candy on a wall here yeah so m m starburst uh butterfinger and it's like, and it <laughs> fix yourself a little bag. We got little scoops. You fix yeah. yourself a little bag. No reason to leave the house. No, nobody, nobody bothering you. You know, like I, every time I go to the movies, I'm upset because someone like got their feet up on the thing or yeah, they're oh, eating the popcorn. Thing. The whole thing. It's like sticky floor. The guy in front of you is checking his Instagram, and the light looks like you know. The Luxor Hotel. It's like everything. Even even the drive. This movie better not suck because I got a ten minute drive back home afterwards. Everything. I'm right there yeah, with you. The, the bathroom. You got to race to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, like here here. It's like you pause it because so, Lana's got a lot of questions. Right. Right. She like, turns around. Pause it. And pause it. And discuss. Oh, that guy is from the, that family, and that's a, oh okay. Right. Okay. I'm a blah, blah, blah. See, Jackie asks the question though, and I tell her, I go, just tell me pause. Now I got to rewind because I didn't hear what he said. 
Like, like yeah, I like no, how you say a lot of this is pause, pause, ask question. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. amazing what women don't catch in a movie. I guess they don't really care as much as us. That's the problem. Is it is it is it a woman thing? Because I am watching the same thing. Here we go, another call. I'm watching the same thing she's watching, and it's like you didn't hear what he just said. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, this is why we get in arguments in our relationship. You ain't hearing shit. <laughs> it, it, right? it makes you wonder, you know. But then they'll say, "Well, I'm not really into this movie." I'm like, "Yeah, but you, 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 you're looking at the screen, <laughs> and he just said, da da da, uh, you know." I know, I know, I know. I don't, I don't get that. But let me ask you this: So, with this movie thing here, when you guys go to have movie night, do you even say like ten o one or ten o'clock start, so the whole family knows? Or do you just kind of like a living room? You just go in, pop it on? Because I'm, I'm like the more realistic. I almost want to have trailers playing before you even start watching the movie you want to watch. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm thinking. Oh, my God. I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> Some old <laughs> ones, especially. <clears throat> you know what I'm going to do? Because this is the perfect idea. Lana's always like, what movie should I watch? I want to do, after hearing your idea, we're watching Succession, right? So what I want to do is in the queue have four movies that are trailers before we watch Succession, and I tell her, out of those four, pick the next movie you want to watch. Oh, because Because we're always sitting there going, what do you want to watch? And then what should we want? If I go and and premeditate the trailers, I think we could, oh, this is a great yeah, idea. That's, what a great idea. I Even when, when we go to pick a movie on Netflix or something, a lot of times it won't have a trailer. I'll Google it. The trailer's on the on the, online, and then me and Jackie will hold it up and look at it on the couch, and just, you ever watch a trailer, you're not even halfway through, and you're like, beat it. Oh. We watch, you know? I mean. I've also done it the other way around. I've been halfway through a trailer, and I stopped the trailer because I don't even want to know. Because you could, you could basically get the vibe of the movie through the trailer. Like, yeah, you do that. I hear you. You go, I'm in. I'm in. Shut it down. I'm already in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. We watched a trailer the other day with Liam Neeson. What is this guy drinking? He's, what is he, 70 years old? And, he, bro, he doesn't even look good. He is just handsome. handsome. I, if I was oh, a woman, I'd make love to him. No problem. Oh, yeah. He's, he's I mean, not, not only that, but the movies he does, it's just like it's like a modified superhero. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> leaned hard into that, man. That's all he's doing now. That's all he does. He does. He's on a train. He's getting his daughter out of, uh, you know, Uruguay or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I know we, we always find out he's X everything, you know, <laughs> you know, high ops, this, that, the other thing. And if, you know, oh, every time, every time. I got to tell you, if I wasn't a comedian, yeah. that's how I would want to walk around life. Undescript, under the radar, but I know how to do everything, right? Yeah. Denzel Washington, same character in The Equalizer. You ever see this movie? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, there's two of them. Equalizer 2 is out. Instead of watching Irishman this weekend, if you haven't seen Equalizer 2, yeah. get, in, get in bed with that. Holy crap. That's how I want it, you know. <laughs> I got a I got a dream of like knowing some some either a martial art or knowing how to get out of situations and two guys coming up to me going, "Yeah, you think you know." And it's within seconds they're on the floor. God, right? Like you don't even wrinkle your suit. <laughs> right? Oh, man. You you would have to start at six, like as soon as your your neighbor walked you back home when you were eight years old from sleepwalking, the next morning you would have had to start training with a Buddha monk every day, cut out of school and just do that, like right. But I'm with you. Just how cool? Just oh god! Like it, you, where you, you, someone comes up to you in a parking lot and you're like, don't just you know walk away. But, yeah, you're so confident in your abilities with someone's like, yeah, he's gonna carjack you. And and you and you just you hit him in the neck and they lose like, oh my 
huh. and they, they can't breathe. It's it happens so quick. They're 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 not only trying to get air in in their in their lungs, yeah. but at the same time they're trying to figure out what just happened. To <laughs> right, them, right, right, right. But you're so badass. After you do that to them. You you you're holding them and gently putting them back in a chair and whispering, "Don't worry, you'll be able to breathe soon." And then you walk away, and people don't even know he's fucked up because you sat him like weekend at Bernie's back in his chair, bro. That is badass. There are like five people like that in the whole world. Tom Cruise is one of them, by the way. I love, I, I love I love the hurting someone. And then taking oh, care of oh, what, what, just <laughs> what a beautiful look! I know. Oh my god! You see Anthony Hopkins do that in uh, in Hannibal. He stabs the guy, and then he just kind of lays him down on the sidewalk like he's a slumbering wino, you know, just hunched <laughs> over. And they're like people walk by and go, "Oh, look at him helping the bum!" <laughs> no, he just stabbed him. With that. It's unbelievable. Oh god! It's a great it's Oh, it's a beautiful move, man. I like that. You just yeah, cause cause then it it that's a mind mind fuck for the guy because he's sitting there going he can't breathe, and then in his head he's going and he's helping me. In the oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh shit! Yeah, that's a dream of mine. I always wanted to be like if I wasn't married, like deep. Deep undercover in like Beirut, like like <laughs> literally they're telling the FBI and CIA when you land you want to go see. They call them the core. Find the core. Like I'm I'm got long hair. I'm in flip flops. I speak Beirutese, Lebanonese. <laughs> you know, Beirutese. haven't seen my family in years. You know, what I mean, just like deep, deep. Oh, I ba- I barely remember my childhood. That's how deep I am. I, I, I'm I with you. It's a type of job, if you are married, you can't even tell your wife what uh, you've been... Married, uh, bro. I made love to a woman from every country. I got like two <laughs> countries left that I haven't made love to, right? Like, dude, I'm talking, right? Just... Like like Jason Bourne. Oh, my God. But not that, like, you know, but I'm enjoying life, though. I'm not yeah, yeah. fucked up in the head. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're, like you're sipping cappuccino and having a nice cannoli out in, in, in Venice. But then the the next scene, you're you're tied up to a chair with a ball gag in your mouth, right? You got to get out of this, right? Right. It's, right. It's, you got it, bro. And I got to make my way to Brazil because I've got a hundred grand buried in a hill <laughs> right outside of town. <laughs> right? Oh yeah, man. What a life. Oh, what a life, man. Oh, is that yeah, great? Yeah, I, think yeah, I don't the, think the pandemic is slowing those guys down. I don't know, man. I, I I I think those guys had the vaccine in February. I think you're right. I think you're right, man. That's it. who's got this thing. I mean, come on, come on. Where is this thing? I, 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 are I, you even hearing? Is it like like if my mom? Just... Can't, my mom can't even get it. Seventy five years old. She can't even get it out here. We'll see. It's it's so screwed up the way this thing came out. It was like no prep, no nothing. I think they're asking people on Craigslist in an ad, do you want to give the vaccine? Come in for training. I mean, it's like they don't even have the people to give it. Oh, man. I just, I, I, I honestly thought there'd be a knock at my door. That's how it would work. They open up the cooler, the stuff still. You bring them into your kitchen. You know, they already have a vial with all the names on it because they know from the past census, taxes paid, who lives where. And you all get the shot, and then they go to the next house, and they just make well, their way neighborhood to neighborhood. Nope. Here's the problem. What? Huh. The storage of it, one of the vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine, it's got to be like 100 below zero. Now, I'm, I'm grateful that they came out with the thing, but didn't every, anybody in the meeting go, guys, I don't know about, like, storing this at this type of temperature. Yeah, yeah. I don't know anybody that's got that type of freezer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever go to a Rite Aid? They can't even keep a Klondike bar solid. Their freezers <laughs> suck, bro. They do. I'm telling you. They don't even sell Ben and Jerry's. Like, what are you kidding me? We can't keep that shit frozen. Shit's too big. A pint? Yeah, do you mind? Grab a fucking ice cream sandwich and shut up. I'm telling you, man. 
So, yeah, if you say you got to have it in dry ice, I say, then you know what? You didn't invent the vaccine because that's unrealistic. <laughs> you talk to me when you got a room temp vaccine and we'll go from there. Well, the flu vaccine is stored in a refrigerator. I mean, I so there has to be some type of storage, apparently, with vaccines that have some type of temperature control. Right. But when you're you know, 100 below zero, 80 below zero, whatever the hell it is, you know, hospitals have that type of capability. I'm just saying, I was looking, like you were saying, to call up my doctor and go, I'm coming in today for the vaccine. And right. you go, okay. Yeah. But I got to wait in line at Dodger Stadium <laughs> and have, a, and, and have a, a, a UPS driver stick me with a needle. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I don't even know. I think it's I do you feel like an extra in a Bruce Willis movie lining up at Dodger Stadium for a shot? I mean, it's just bizarre, man. Unbelievable. Oh, man, it's so bad. Um, and by the way, did they invent the vaccine in a hundred minus hundred degrees? Like did they, did they have to do it in a freezer and then the guy came out? We got it. <laughs> I gotta go cool. back in or else it's not gonna work. But I got but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Did the guy come out in a snowsuit and gloves saying, God <laughs> damn, it's cold in there? <laughs> oh, 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 did you make it? As soon as you make it, they go, it, We made it. Now freeze it. Freeze it. Freeze it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, know, God. I don't know. All right. Great hanging All with right. you, brother. Good, good hang. Good, good uh, second show. I'm going to go through. Uh, I'm going to go through this and see what we could throw out. Um, oh, but yeah. Yeah, good, good hang. We could do this twice a week, no problem. Beautiful. I agree. Uh, for those of you listening to the Pete and Sebastian show, please, please share it on your socials. We always love to see uh, new fans join the family here. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Good hang. Take care.